Just before we start this video, if you have any questions at all, you can leave them in the comments section down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, question 5a part i, we need to leave our answers in index form again. So this one, very similar to what we've seen already, apart from this three terms. So we can do it in one go, we can just imagine this is 6 to the power of 1. And therefore all we're doing for this question is adding the 5 and the 2 and then adding 1 to that answer. So 5 add 2 add 1 is 8, so we are left with 6 to the power of 8. Part B, okay this is something a bit different, well part 2, that we haven't seen before. So instead of having two bases that are the same being multiplied together, this time we've got one base and the entire thing is being squared. Okay, so it might help to rewrite this question like this. So we've got 9 to the power of 7. And all squared means is everything inside the bracket is being multiplied by itself. So multiply by 9 to the 7. And from here we can see all we have to do is add the two powers. And this is equal to 9 to the power of 14. There is a shortcut to getting this answer without having to write it out like this. And that shortcut is whatever the power is inside the bracket, what we do is we multiply it by the squared, or if it was cubed, we'd multiply it by 3, or if it was to the power 4 outside the bracket, we'd multiply it by 4. So we just multiply these two values and that gets us 14, and the base of course stays the same. Okay, so that's the shortcut, but you can do it this way as well, and you'll get 9 to the power 14 both times. Okay, so part B, uh, similar to what we've seen, we just need to find the value of n. So first thing, we're going to multiply both sides by 5 to the power 6. But I'm going to do it in one step this time. So 5 to the power 6 multiplied by both sides. What we end up with is 5 to the power 4 multiplied by 5 to the power 6, which is equal to 5 to the power of 10. So 5 to the n multiplied by 5 to the 3 is now equal to 5 to the power of 10. Next step is to divide by 5 to the power of 3. Again, I'll do this in one go. So we are left with 5 to the n is now equal to 5 to the power of 10 take away 3, which is 5 to the power of 7. And from observation, we can see that n is equal to 7. Okay, question 6, part a, part 1. Um, really simple now at this stage. So this is just equal to 2 to the power of 7. And part 2, again, really simple. 3 to the power of 6. Okay, part b. We need to find the value of x. Now this is a bit different again, so we've got 5 to the power of x is equal to 1, and we need to find the value of x. So this is just one of the rules that we need to learn for indices, so the rule is that anything, and I'll call it n, to the power of 0 is always equal to 1. So more examples, we could have 100 to the power of 0 is equal to 1, or we could have pi to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So essentially we just need to learn that anything to the power 0 will equal 1. So therefore we can say that x is equal to 0. Okay. Question 7. We're now introducing some negative powers. So it's a bit more difficult. But once you've learned how to do it, it's just as easy, to be honest. Um, it's just knowing what steps to do. Okay, so whenever we see a negative power, in this case we've got negative 3, the first thing that we need to do is write down a fraction, and that is 1 divided by. What we then do is we keep the base the same, so we put 2 on the bottom of our fraction, and instead of having a negative power, so negative 3, we turn it into a positive, so it becomes plus 3. And these two expressions are equivalent. So from this point, all we have to do is cube the 2 on the bottom of the fraction, to get 1 over 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, so 1 eighth. Okay. Part B. So, another rule is when we've got a fractional power, this is essentially the cube root. So, to the power of x to the power of 1 third is equal to the cube root of x. Likewise, we could have x to the power of a half is equal to the square root of x, and so on. So this time it's the cube root. Now, as we've got a fraction inside the bracket here, we need to apply the cube root to both the top and the bottom of the fraction. 
So we can rewrite this expression as we can say it's equal to the cube root of 27 divided by the cube root of 343. Okay, and the cube root of 27 is equal to 3. And that is over the cube root of 343. Now I don't know off the top of my head, but I know that uh, 4 cubed is 64, 5 cubed is 125, 6 cubed is 196 I think so 7 cubed let's see 49 times 7 we get 280 plus 63 yep so it's over 7 so if you don't know the value of the cube root of 343 or any other number for that matter just see what I've just done there um, go through the ones that you do know and if it's bigger than that you keep going up and up and up and eventually you'll find the right answer so in this case it was 7 so the final answer is 3 sevens. Okay, part C, we've got a 4 outside the bracket. Now the interesting thing is we've got a square root on the inside. So the first thing we're going to do is, from up here we know that x to the power of half is equal to the square root of x. I'm going to rewrite this question as 3 eighths, but the 3 eighths is to the power of half. All I've done there is replace the square root by the power half. And then we've got the entire thing raised to the power of 4 from here. Now you might remember from this rule, if we can find it, yep, this one here, that when we've got two powers outside, well, two powers that are being raised to each other with the same base, we multiply them together. So in this case, we multiplied by the 7 by the 2 to get 14. And for this question, all we have to do is multiply by the 4 and the half so this is equal to 3 eighths and it's been raised by a half times by 4 so the final answer for this question is 3 eighths to the power of 2 and does it want us to expand it? Uh, yep so we need to expand this again so 3 eighths all squared all we have to do is multiply 3 eighths by itself so we simply multiply 3 by 3 and 8 by 8 so we get 9 over 64 okay so just to recap we change the square root to the half here and we remember the 4 from outside the bracket next step is to remember the rule two powers being raised to each other we multiply them so a half multiplied by 4 gets us 2 and then we just multiply 3 eighths by itself to get 9 over 64 I hope this video was useful and if you've got any questions at all you can always ask me in the comment section down below or alternatively you can contact me on Instagram via DM and I'll be sure to help you out there. Don't forget to subscribe as well and turn on channel notifications and then you will never miss an upload in the future. And of course I upload daily on Instagram as well as TikTok and if you want more maths content be sure to follow me over there.